How to Shut Down Jenkins There are times when you need to shut down your Jenkins controller, but how do you do it? We're going to look at two different ways you can do that in this video. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.346.3. Now, for both of the scenarios that we're looking at, you're going to need to have administrative privileges within the Jenkins controller. The other assumption that I'm making is that you're trying to be nice as an administrator, meaning you're not just going to go in and do a service stop or do a kill dash nine to kill off processes. We're making the assumption that we're going to do everything as nicely as possible. So let's go ahead and go into Manage Jenkins and let's scroll down to the bottom and click on Prepare for Shutdown. Let's give it a reason of time for a nap and prepare for shutdown. Now you'll notice that we have a big red banner here. We click on dashboard. We see the big red banner everywhere. But most importantly, we see in the build queue that Jenkins is going to shut down. No further builds will be performed. Now let's say for a moment that maybe I got a little bit ahead of myself and I'm not really ready to shut it down at this point just yet. I can click on cancel and it will remove the banner and notice that the build queue opens back up. Now, the one way to cancel is what we just showed you. But let's take a look at Manage Jenkins, Prepare for Shutdown. Let's say Time for a Nap again. We'll click on Prepare for Shutdown. But you'll also notice here that we can update the reason or we can cancel the shutdown. So if I click on Cancel Shutdown, it takes me back to the point of being ready for the shutdown. But we are really ready for a nap. So let's go ahead and say Time for a Nap. Prepare for Shutdown. We take a look at the dashboard. Everything's ready to go. It says it's going to shut down. No other builds would be performed. Now at this point, if I was running Linux, I would go in and say system CTL stop Jenkins. Or if I was running on Windows, I would go into the task manager and stop the Jenkins process. But let's say for a moment that I don't have the capabilities of logging in to the controller to stop the process. So that means I would not be able to SSH into Linux or I don't have RDP access to my Windows machine that's running the controller. There is a way to do this completely with the Jenkins CLI. So again, because we're wanting to be nice, we would still go ahead as our first step and go ahead and put the Jenkins controller into prepare for shutdown mode, just like what we see on our screen. Next up, I need to get the Jenkins CLI if I haven't downloaded it yet. And in my case, I haven't. So let's go to manage Jenkins. Let's go down to the CLI section, which is down here under tools and actions, Jenkins CLI. And then I need to download the Jenkins CLI jar. So I'm going to copy this. So let's go over to our shell and let's download that jar file. In my case, I'm going to use wget and paste in the URL and it downloads the jar file. Now notice it's downloading the jar file from the controller. The CLIs match to the version of the controller you're running. So if you have an old CLI, you'll want to make sure that it actually works with your controller. As a best practice, anytime you're going to be working with the CLI, make sure you've downloaded the CLI from the controller that you're wanting to operate against. Now to make this a little bit simpler for myself, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up a couple of environment variables. For the first environment variable, I'm going to set the Jenkins user ID to admin because that is the user that I'm working with in this controller. Secondly, I'm going to set up the Jenkins API token. Now, prior to starting recording, I had set up a token for the admin user by going into admin, clicking on configure, and going down to API tokens, and I created a new token. So in my case, the value for this token is this long string. And finally, I'm going to set up the Jenkins URL to point at this controller. Now with the CLI, we're going to run two steps. The first step we're going to do is quiet down, and then the second step will be safe-shutdown. So let's go back into our controller just for a moment, and let's go ahead and cancel this previous preparing for shutdown because we're going to be using quiet down to set that up for us. So let's go back over to our documentation for the CLI and let's look for quiet down. And if we take a look at quiet down, what we see is we set up this whole path here. We've already set up our server. That's our Jenkins URL. So we'll say java-jar Jenkins CLI jar and we'll give it quiet down. And then we have some options that we can set for quiet down. We can either set block, which means block until the system really quiets down and no builds are running. By default, that's false, but I'm going to go ahead and set that to true. Also, I can go ahead and set a reason. Remember we said time for a nap earlier? Well, now I can set the reason from the command line. And we can also set a timeout, but we're not going to use the timeout in this situation. So let's go ahead and go back over to our shell and let's run our command. We'll clear this out first. 
Let's take a look at the command. We're going to do java-jar, jenkins-cli.jar, quiet down. We're setting block, and we're setting a reason, in quotes, time for a nap. Remember, we've already set up our server with the Jenkins URL environment variable. We've set up the user ID, and we've also set up the token. So let's go ahead and hit Enter. We got no response, but you'll notice down here, Jenkins is going to perform a shutdown. If we click on Dashboard, we can see our big banner here, time for a nap. Now at this point, we're ready to actually go ahead and shut down. I don't have any active jobs, even though I've set up block. I don't have any jobs running. I don't have to wait for anything to complete. The server was basically quiet anyway. So let's go back over and take a look at safe shutdown. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, go back down to our CLI, and let's look for safe shutdown. And with safe shutdown, it puts it into quiet mode. Now, we decided to go ahead and put it into quiet mode for ourselves first. That gave us the ability to go ahead and set up the block. So again, I'm trying to be as nice of an administrator as possible. By setting it into quiet, setting the block, if things were already running, I'm gonna let them finish out. And I basically want the controller to be at this nice and quiet position before I do anything else. Now that I know that I'm quiet, I'm ready to go ahead and issue the safe shutdown. Since I'm an administrator on the server, and I've set up the user, I've set up the token, I've set up the server URL, I can now run the safe shutdown. Now you'll also notice by taking a look at the documentation here, it's waiting for existing builds to be completed. Again, I could have probably just run safe shutdown, but in my case, I want to run it in a two-step process. I want to do a quiet down first and then do the safe shutdown. Again, I'm trying to be as nice as possible. You'll also notice there are no other options for safe shutdown, so all we have to do is issue the command. So let's go ahead and go back over to our shell. And with our shell, what we're going to do is we're going to say java-jar, jenkinscli.jar, safe-shutdown. Again, safe-shutdown does the quiet down for us. It also does the block. But safe shutdown does not give me the ability to set the reason. So in this case, again, I like a two-step process. I'm setting my quiet down, got everything quiet. Everything's now truly quiet. And now I'm ready to do the safe shutdown. When I hit enter, it takes just a moment. And if we go back into our browser, I click on dashboard, it's unable to connect because the process has been shut down on the server. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.